nice and warm up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's been basically the end of summer. It feels like the beginning. Well. From Erie's own government access, Channel 9, from the City Hall Council Chambers, it's time once again for the Taxpayers Hotline Show. And now, ladies and gentlemen, your host. Uh -oh. We're on there. We're here. This is uh, Kaz Kwiatkowski, City Councilman, and my good friend. Dave Paradiso from Cat TV. Right. Hey, how you doing? Good? Doing good. I've been busy working lately, that's so why I haven't been on. But... Yeah, DJ's under the weather today. Yeah, he's down sick as well. Yep. John had, John, uh, he, he wasn't here, but uh, we, we have different varied guests. That's good, at least. Sometimes you got to work. People don't forget that, you know. Exactly, that. yeah. Well, some people got to get by to still be able to live. But it's nice to have somebody here because, you know, when you start listening to yourself talk, you get... Yeah, look, you got to call her. There we go. I'm going to take a bet who this is. Go ahead, call her. Hey, Kaz, it's DJ. Hey, well, you you know it doesn't sound like you? That means you really are in bad shape. Hey, I'm on death's door. <laughs> you, you sound like uh, uh, Captain Ahab after a rough day in the sea. Yeah, well, it's been about that. You, the, the live stream is not up. We can't see you on the interwebs. Oh, I, hey, uh, Mike, uh, did you hear that? The live stream's not up? I think he's working on it. Yeah, uh -huh. that's what I'm told. So. Hey, by the way, there is a death's door, by the way. Yeah? It's up in, I think, Wisconsin. It's a, uh oh, of course, Wisconsin. I'll have to get you a bottle of uh, death's door vodka. Oh, yeah, that'll really help. Well, that, you, but, go, to, you go to bed, take a couple shots of that. Some some wake up. That's some how it works. some V8, and you know, you, you forget about all the other problems you have, and you'll. Oh, you know. oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, <laughs> it just came online. I'm gonna let you guys go. Gotta go. Hey, thanks for calling, and thanks, uh, DJ. <laughs> watch that voice. All right, no problem. I have a great radio voice. <laughs> you got a face for a TV too, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh -oh. He's gone. He's all <laughs> streams up and running he, again. He We're does good. sound terrible, doesn't he? Yeah. Yes, he does. I hardly recognized him. He was like that this morning when he called me. He's been you know, down pretty sick, so hey, hopefully he gets I, better. He said, I'm not doing the good. I'm coming in. That's not me. You can stay home. I don't need you. Yep. Jeez, you know, what a time to get sick, though, when you got such nice weather. Oh, I know. It feels like it's like it feels like the middle of summer, not the end of summer, because it's been so warm out and so nice out. It is kind of freaky out there. I mean, it, it, you think about it, you know. I mean, we're September, almost October, and we're in the 80s still. This doesn't happen very often. Yeah, because usually Halloween gets to be very uh, wet. I've seen times cold. when Halloween was like there was snow yeah. on the ground. I mean, but it's 80s out there today. It's been for the past couple of days. Well, one thing about, about up here, you, you take that and you... Enjoy it while you can, yep, because who knows the next time you're going to get that again. We, we have the League of Cities coming in here, and some of the delegates thought we were going to get snow in October. That's, that's the kind of rumors that spread down state about us. Oh, of course. Well, it's because our weather is unpredictable. Well, I assured them. I said even if we got three feet of snow, we could handle it. Yep. The fourth and the fifth might be a little, might take us another day, but go ahead, caller. Hi, Kaz. Are political signs allowed to be out right now, or don't they have to wait till October? You know, somebody asked me that, and I, <coughs> I don't know if there's a city ordinance. Generally, I was always told 30 days prior to the election. And uh, Well, I'm seeing them in Mill Creek, actually. I've seen some in the city already. I, I was driving around from my mother's neighborhood, and there was a couple up there, and uh, they, they seemed to be appearing... I, didn't they file a lawsuit in Mill Creek, too, about what homeowners are allowed to do on their own lawn or something? Oh, well, yeah, it's a damn off on signs, right? But I should check into that, but we were always told as a courtesy, and I, I was told there was a law, but I'm not sure if there is one. I'd have to check the ordinance book. But if there was, I think it was 30 days prior, and I don't know if it was 30 days after or a reasonable time or something like that. Yeah. But generally, they, you know, most... Most people, I learned over the years not to put them out too early, because if you get bad weather, they don't hold up well. So you know, if you're, you know, when you're dealing with them, usually you get them up. If you get them up a month ahead of time or less, they'll usually hold out pretty good too. That's usually the most advertising time anyway for any type yeah. of thing like that anyway. But I'll check for you and try to get an announcement. Okay. I like we we see lots 
election, that last major election, I mean, people were putting up these giants, I mean, handmade billboards, actually. Wow. That's up where? Mayville, you said? The Trump signs, right? The yeah. Trump signs that well, were, you know, be. built with two-by-fours. Some of them are still up. I, 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 I do some travel in the rural parts of PA when I... Uh, when we visit my wife's old hometown, we, we go through some of the woods and stuff, and uh, you'd be surprised the signs. We went to Hermitage one day for something, and there were signs still up down there along the side roads. Yeah. Yeah, it's like they never disappeared. Yeah. That's because nobody came back to tear them down after they were done. They just, they built it and left it. Yep. Hey, uh, Chaz, I asked about that uh, abandoned boat on uh, 4th and Euclid. It's still there. I know. I know you turned it in, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to take that long to remove it. Fourth and Euclid. Yeah. An abandoned boat, right? Yeah. Okay, I will have to recheck on it. Did you ever drive by that thing? I think I did, but probably when I was on my way to Pete's. Uh, I used to, when I went down to uh, Ricardo's one day, one night. Yeah. I'll, I'll make. I I'll probably do to go down there, so I'll take another ride. I'll tell you what. That whole guy's house is just it's a nightmare. What's that? The, the guy's house is just a nightmare. He's a hoarder. Yeah, and he, that, that's going to be a problem in, in town where they found that, that one guy up on, what was it, 26th or 28th Street? And I, I knew of one that was a hoarder in uh, Glenwood Park Avenue in, in the Glenwood District. I know it's kind of a problem throughout the city and throughout the, well, throughout the county. There's a lot of, a lot of them around. I don't, it, there was one guy, they found a car in his back sun porch. I believe it. How about that one? Would you, uh, uh, an old car? I had a friend of mine that had like four semi trailers and five house trailers on his property. Are you still there, sir? Yeah, and I got one, one more thing to talk about. Go ahead. About. But remember that uh, pickup truck I reported a couple years ago with the uh, weeds and trees growing out of the back? It's back. Wh where's it at now? It's in front of 32 Chautauqua. 32 Chautauqua? Yeah, and it's not, not inspected. And there's weeds and trees growing out of the back. What, did it disappear for a while? Although, obviously, they must have got it inspected and drove for a little bit, and now it's just back sitting where it was. At 32 Chautauqua? Yep, doesn't move. Weeds and trees growing out of the back. Wow. I've seen a few of them in my days, but uh, hey, I'll, I'll have to turn these in and then take a ride down and take a look at them, too. Right on the street, Kaz, not in, the, not in their driveway, right on the street. Hey, they got to move it in their driveway or something. Get off the road. Yeah, you don't want it in the driveway too long either, though. No, we don't want it anywhere, but, I mean, hey, they're allowed to have one junk vehicle. That's what you said before, right? That's what I think the law said, but it has to be, I don't know if it's junk. It has to be, like, it can be, an, it can be without a license, but it has to be, I think, it has to have the tires and everything intact and all that. Yeah. It's supposed to be able to be moved. Well, what they don't want is a, like a car sitting back there with weeds growing out of it. If it's a car like you're not using it, you know. Right, or you, like a project car or something like a that. A project car, you don't, yeah, you don't have it inspected, but, you know, it doesn't look like, you know, it looks like it's being washed and everything. And right. I'll yeah. take a look into that ordinance on that one too, okay? Yeah. Well, see, I, I thought back in the day, didn't the cops go around with like a long chalk marker? Yeah, they do. They well, that's what the ordinance said. There's, if they have to legally, I was told, chalk the car, and then they have like 72 hours to move it. And that you know, that's what the chalk is, so that they. But if people are smart, what they'll do, they'll move it up a foot or so. So it's out of the chalk. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, but, good talk to you. you too. Thanks for calling. Yeah, because that's what happens. People find out. You know, they they get cute about it. Yeah. But every once in a while they don't, and then that's that's why you know. Right, and they'd be able to get, finally get something. But at least something's being done about it. Is the main thing is trying to get somebody to actually be able to do that and force. Yeah, because there's nothing worse than it, especially if it's in front of your house, and you know you can't look out your, you know. Right. Yeah, you don't want to have the, you know different stuff for. Different you know, a lot of this there. stuff is you know it's a lack of what I call courtesy and uh, respect for people. You know. Well, it's a different attitude out there now too. It right? is. I mean, a lot of people don't. They don't have the extra stuff or the extra means to go buy a new vehicle or have an, you know, a nicer house or have the money to put back into their own house because they're barely getting by as it is. But I mean, a lot of times it's just like common courtesy, like, you know, yeah. move your car, don't.
you know, people block mailboxes. They don't think anything oh, of yeah, it. You know. Go ahead, caller. Hey, uh, Cass. Yeah. Uh, 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 I was watching the news that they're, uh, they're going to tear down the Bard Rock in, in March. They're going to tear, what, the McBride Viaduct? Yeah, the McBride Rock. Well, that's and the... they're going to widen the sidewalk on the, on the, the Bayfront Bridge here. They're going to widen the sidewalk. I thought it was the sidewalks on the north side of 12th Street. Yeah, they're up uh, on the connector. They're gonna ride the sidewalk. He said. Are you in favor of it, or? Uh, I'm not saying anything because you told me I don't live in that part of the neighborhood. Well, you know, it's it's going to be a there's a lot of uh, discussion once again on whether we should tear it down or or not. Yeah. But you know that decision was made by a previous council, by previous study commissions. But, yeah. and as I tell the people, it's getting late in the game and you know, nobody's come up with a ironclad plan yet. Yeah. You know, to one way or the other. I mean, right now the state is proceeding and so is the city on the assumption that yeah. they're gonna do what the study said, which is they're gonna tear that down. They're gonna put, yeah. they're gonna put the interchange in at uh, Buffalo Road and Bayfront Highway, the, the roughly in the, in the area of Buffalo Road. It will be up, I think, a block. And then they're going to make some enhancements to uh, 12th Street with, with the pedestrian right away. Yeah. But, you know, and, and when the, the figures kept moving, it's because the plan kept moving. But the, right. but the plan on the, the, the bridge is right now that uh, if we were to, to stop it today, we'd have to renovate it. There'd be no doubt about that. Yeah, but you would have to. But the plan is not to open it up as a vehicle bridge, and and you have the public divided on that issue. Should we just have a, a, a pedestrian bridge, or should we have a you know? Right. Well, it depends on so the cost of maintaining it and/or the cost of tearing it down and doing the other alterations. Yeah. They, uh, you know, because you said if they have, if they repair it, you would have to. Pay so and so much money for them to keep it maintained. You mean the the bridge? The bridge, yes. Yeah. See, right now they're not made. They're not really maintaining it. They're not even plowing it. Right. But it still remains a uh, a pedestrian walk. Well, unofficially, it's been closed off. Yeah. No one's ever arrested anybody, but right now it's closed off. Right, there's been no enforcement on that yet. Right, and, and they're, 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 you know, they've been nice to people and they haven't done anything. But, you know, if anything does happen, there's always the issue about... Liability, who's, yeah. who's responsible. Right, and that's, oh, that's, that's one big, of the big things. That's one of the big risks, too. Look, in a perfect world, I fought for that bridge. I wanted to see it stay, but and I think there's a purpose for it. But, yeah. but the fact remains that there's no money being allocated. Uh, right. They've decided to move on and... It's it's going to be it's going to be a political uh, debate. I can tell you that. Yeah, but they do have another meeting on it. Well, yeah, the state. See, uh, people came to council and they'll tell me no, but they were kind of blaming. They didn't know who to blame, so they blamed us. They blamed the state. Well, you know what? Uh, That's a state meeting or a federal highway meeting. That's not our meeting. You know, they they said it wasn't proper advertising. I can guarantee you that if we advertised, it would have been done on time. But, yeah. but that, you know, the state, they decided to move it back now because they didn't have adequate advertising. And they probably were checking on whether they had to do it again because they've already had public hearings on the bridge. So, right. but they're adhering to the law and if they need another public hearing or an informative session, because if you notice on TV, they said it's going to be an informative session yeah. aimed at a specific topic. And, you know, that's not going to make a lot of people happy. Well, it's they're making oh. making their full decision. This is what we're going to do. Yep. Yeah. Kinda well, they they left a decision originally up to everybody, or well, up to us. You know, we formed a, a citizens. I was watching city councilman on TV that, uh, that they're, they're trying to keep the bridge for for a, for a pedestrian walk. Though. Right. Yeah. And you know, 
Look, uh, you know, I, when they formed the, the Citizens Re Committee to decide all this, to work with PennDOT and the city, I wasn't on council. I didn't appoint anybody. I don't even know who was appointed at that time. Right. But, you know, I mean, I was an advocate with uh, the people with Father Jerry that I wanted to keep it, if possible. That was, yeah. you know. But, yeah. but that decision was made, and now we're, you know, we're going back, and we're, and what's, what, what's, what's going to happen is that there'll be a point in time where the state or the federal government is going to say, uh, make up your mind because the money's here now, but it might not be later. Right, yeah, it's either do something with it now or... Do, or yeah. Because you see how Washington and Harrisburg are running right now. Oh, yeah, they're going to be... They're, they're like looking for pennies to rob from one bank to put in another. Yep, rob from Peter to pay Paul. they got a bunch of problems, too, like that. In Harrisburg, they got a bunch of problems. Yeah, you know, the problem is here, we don't have the political power that they do out east. And, and I will say this, I told this to a lot of people, I said, if this was Pittsburgh, we'd have all those bridges. You would have that bridge. Pardon? Yeah. What? Well, I'll leave you go. Okay, see you around. Bye. Bye. He calls in all the time, he got some good, you know. Yeah, no, that's good insight. He, he's smart though, he don't want to get involved in the fight. Right, I yeah, that. I definitely agree with him there. <laughs> go ahead, caller. Don't you carry an ordinance book with you? There's one next door. I could probably go, but if I go, I got to leave it over to Dave. I don't know if he's comfortable. No, I carry a constitution with me all the time. Do you read it, though? Yes. Do you read it your way or the way it was written by the founding? The way it's proposed. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Uh, it, you remember it's a living document, right? Yes. And some of us disagree under certain amendments. Yeah. You know. Oh, that's the whole thing. I mean, how you interpret it. But well, people just seem to, they don't care. They interpret the way they want to. Well, that's the trouble. People interpret just like the Bible. And they throw it out. Everything's interpreted in there. People take the Bible like that too, right? Mm -hmm. Right, Dave? Oh, yeah. Well, it depends on what Bible you're reading. Well, here's what I always laugh at. You know, people, like, when we argue about different amendments, I don't want to get into which ones, but there's some of my favorites, you know. Oh. And I said, you know what? you got to look at that amendment. And now there's two forms of how, how they view this. Yeah, their way and your way. Well, yeah, but a lot of people view it as, you know, it was written here, this is how it meant. Other people realize that it's a living document that when, when we talk about, like, different amendments, okay, we're talking about men that lived in the 1780s. That's true. In the 1770s who couldn't have envisioned. Of what it's like today. Yeah, like even when we talk about guns and all that. What about Nostradamus? He had a vision. Yeah, but, you know, was he on drugs or what? We don't know, you know. But, I mean, seriously, John, we, they couldn't have envisioned the type of weapons we have, the type of vehicles we have, the type of communications we have. That's why there should have been a clause in there to redo it every 50, every 100 years. Well, they put a clause in there that says we could, we could review it with, uh, with the amendment process, which is pretty tough to do, though. But three-quarters of Congress are agreeing to it and three-quarters of the state. Yeah, and it's pretty tough to do, and it takes so long that it's not... You know, but I think, you know, basically, if, if people look at it in the spirit that it was intended. It was, it was a great document for the time. Absolutely, and it still, it still can be a good tool today, but unfortunately, some of us like to leave certain words out, certain lines. Yeah. And this is what it meant, what, it means it to you, but. Yeah, it's all in, said in interpretation and how you, you know, how you read it and how. How you interpret it. Yeah, what did I learn one time when I took law? There was a, the, the intent and word of the law, yeah. and then there's the spirit of the law, you know, and there's... Yeah. It's just like the militia. Yeah, yeah, what is a militia? You know, when you look at it from the 1770s... It was anybody who was in their state and wanted to defend their state. Well, if you look at it those days, John, we, we had very few big cities, so very few police forces. We usually had a marshal or a sheriff or a constable, we had no standing army except a time of war or a very limited standing army and navy at the time. So the National Guard, as we call it today, was the outgrowth of the militia, True. which which every man, because you didn't have a Wegmans or a giant eagle, you had to be able to hunt. So that's, hence, if you took away a man's weapon, you took away his ability to feed his family. Well, if I had to feed my family today, we'd all starve. Well, yeah, but I mean, when you look at it back in those days, 
you know, every man had a duty to defend the village and to be able to provide for, for the family, you know. Mm -hmm. Hey, I uh, heard you talking about political signs. Well, I've seen a couple of mayor signs out. Yeah, they're, they're out. I, I don't think this guy saw them, and, you know, it's possible because there's very few out there. It's on. But they're starting to come out. They're popping out already. Property, a lot of these. Yes, they are, and I think they had a discussion about, you said public or private? Public. Ooh, that, see, that's where the ordinance would definitely take effect. Yeah, and, you know, you see these uh, guys from uh, going around uh, and the trucks and all that, and they know they're illegal, so they should just stop and pick them up. Yep. I personally don't put them out too early because between the rain and the weather, and just the sun alone, they'll fade and it, you know, it'll become very unattractive, you know. I got a garage full of them from the people that didn't stop and pick them up. Well, you know, some of us try to pick them up, but a certain guy takes them down too early. Yeah, well, that's, that's the way it goes. You know, you do talk you, about... Do you want me to come and get them? No. Oh, okay. Yours, yours isn't in my garage. Well, did I pick... I usually pick mine up early, right? It's right away. Yeah, I try to get the second, Before second or third day. Before I got a chance to put it in the garage. I was at, I got my shot up in Zem Zem, and what's the county executive doing out there? Uh, is she pushing for votes? I don't know. What, what was she doing? She had an Erie County booth. At Zem Zem? Up at Zem Zem, when for last week for... Oh, was that a health fair or something? Yeah. I hope she was pushing the county health programs. I don't think so. I think she was there uh, just showing her skinny face. Excuse me, I shouldn't have said that. But I t I'll tell you what, I did get a bracelet there, and I thought maybe you might know where uh, I could locate a few more of them. They were to support our various troops. Yeah, what, what were you trying to get? A, a bracelet. A bracelet. It's, it's on a, like a, a rubber. Or a... Who Who's handing them out, do you know? No, they were for sale. Oh. And uh, well, I, I made a mistake. I only bought one. I got three girls. <laughs> Support our troops. I'll try to find them for you. You know, they have the Eagle on there. They got yeah. the Coast Guard, the Army, the Marines. I'll try to find out who's doing them. And uh, the, the lady was very nice, and they were giving little miniature hand flags. So she was handing them out. I mean, she was selling them, right? Yeah, the flags they were giving you. I got a book at home. If, I, if it's in, I'll check my... Uh, I got a, what they call Medals of America book. Well, this is like little Scrabble pieces. I'll, tell, I'll, I'll give you a copy of one of my magazines, see if you can find in there. So maybe I should just call the vets and see uh, if they might know. It sounds like it's a private person that does it. No, 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 okay, this was an online. organization helping. Oh, really? Yes. That you don't know who it, but you don't know who it was? No, I didn't get a chance. And there's no, no, no literature came with the little uh, bracelet. They usually have a... Uh, yeah, I know. I didn't look. No, I mean, Sean, uh, Sean Lynch used to have one at Gannon coming up in the near future. Mm-hmm. If I take a walk over there, I'll look. I'll see if I can do a little research. Yeah, do that, will you? Yeah. The grass is still growing up here on uh, Fargo. Yeah, we don't have anybody to cut it now, I don't think, so I'll have to see what I can do on that one. I was going by the boulevards down there, and I'm thinking, boy, these kids are going to come while the kids aren't there anymore. Uh, they cut the boulevard and they blow right out into the new pavement. And what are those bicycle signs supposed to do? You know, I'm going to meet with Lee Ann Parmeter when I'm done here, because my mother called me and said, what the heck is that? And I, she couldn't explain to me, so I took a ride. I don't know if it's a, to show the bicycle supposed to be traveling that way. I, you know, we, we don't have it on our side yet of uh, Pine Avenue. <laughs> the bicycle is facing south. So what I did was, you know, I, when I went to my mother's house today, I saw it for the first time, and I said, it looks like, are they saying that that's the bike lane with the cars? I don't think that's a bike lane, because the normally they put a stripe down and leave about two or three feet for the bicycle path. See, what, t what tells me is that they haven't done a good, a good uh, what do you call it, uh, PR, like with people our age that maybe don't, if that's a new rule they got, we haven't been made aware of it in any kind of mailing, you know. You could stick your driver's uh, uh, proposed uh, test out the window because these women are falling right on top of guys. In fact, I have to put my flashers on a lot of time 
to get them people to back off. What do you mean? Too closely fallen. Oh, yeah. You're supposed to give them, what, nine seconds, three car lengths? And nobody pays attention to that. You ever, you know, out east on the highway, on I, I, uh, 95? I, on I-80, when I head out to Allentown. Hang on. They used to have circles in, in, on the pavement on the highway. Yeah. And it was suggested that... It was distance. That, that was distance. They said you should be... For overhead flying tickets. But, yeah. but you know, nobody pays attention to it. And, and it's, it's crazy. Like, today, this woman cuts in front of me, and, and she's got her cell phone on. And I'm going, well, I guess you're just, you know, you're in a different world, lady, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, the cell phone, the texting, and everything else, they should outlaw them completely. Well, they can. What they should do is put a, put a device in the car that locks out your phone, except when the car's in neutral, or if you're making a 911 call. Or if it's shut off. Yeah, 911 call or car's in neutral. But uh, it's just like there used to be a plane that traveled up, up and down 79. The it, squatter for the for the state troopers down below on the on the highway. A lot of people didn't know that either. Did they? Well, if you saw perpe the, the trick was if you saw perpendicular lines, right? That were about a quarter mile spaced. Yes. That's a good. That was a good timing feature. Yes, it was. So. For, for the airplanes or the helicopter. Yeah. Well, we'll let you go, and I'm going to see if I can find where the bracelet comes in. Dave was going to say something. Were you going to answer him on something? Just as some of the stuff, it's hard to enforce. I mean, it's hard to you know, enforce some of that problems of with all the traffic. You know, you could put and the a traffic guy, here is not, nowhere near as bad as like other big cities. You, if you wanted to, and you wanted to be real aggressive, you could put a you could put a special police force out there that did nothing more. Then look for that stuff. Honest to God, you could, but... Uh, you know, pretty soon they're going to come out with governors on all these cars, and yeah. you can only go so fast. Well, we had them, and when, when I was in the Army, we had them on our vehicles. Right. And, you know, no matter what you did, you, you, and that was it. It backed down. So but you know, you, know, you know what they're doing? I got caught. Not, I didn't get caught, but it caught me by surprise. If you go to the baseball game in Cleveland now, uh, on I... 90 just outside of Cleveland if you got a GPS it starts warning you that there's a camera right John yep and then when you go on what I call mini dead man's curve not the big one but the one just before you go into the baseball park when you come over there where the arena baseball park is there they sit. there's there's another camera there and your, your GPS tells you so they're finding out that that's better than having policemen there yeah because it's a better deterrent in, in California, they had them all over the place. Oh, my. Every, oh, of course. Every few blocks, you were like, wham, you know. Yep. Well, we'll let you go. Okay, John. Go get another hey, I, my birthday cake. I, I forgot to wish you a happy birthday. I was good. I'm not a social media person like you, you are, you know. No, I'm not social media. <clears throat> so what do you got over there? You got some bacala cake or what? Uh, that and a little bit of provolone. Ooh. Rope. The real sharp provolone. Yeah, the, the one that's in the... You got any mozzarella and liquid, too? Uh, I just got a bottle of peanut butter jelly wine. What the heck? Something it, different. It's 11% it's by volume, too. You, you, know, you know, going over to your house is always a treat. Yeah. I'm going to have to pay another visit shortly. Twisted Vine Wineries. Well, I don't care where it came from, but 11%, that's pretty good. They All kinds of different ones out there. You'd be surprised on the they different They opened a new now. Keith Cup at Walmart up on Peach Street. They did? Yeah, give it a visit. It's great stuff. You mean they sell wines and stuff? Yeah. I was I was talking to a guy that said the only reason why you don't see like a... And he owned some of the businesses in question. He said because of state law, that's why you don't see a lot of the uh, sheets or country fairs having you know beer and wine yet. Because they weren't designed, they have to be designed in a way that uh, young people underage cannot pass through or in the area like. Right, well they have that set up in New York because they've always I'm had it that way. These when ones I aren't went set up there that and way. saw that winery in there, that little store. Well they're doing it up in, uh, like when I was in Allentown, the newer grocery stores, and they're doing it in Erie now too, they're building the, they have to be separate facilities, correct? Yeah. You know, they have to have a separate cash register, so yeah. it's well, coming, you know. It's yeah. just like the, the the fruit stand up on Upper uh, Peach Street there. 
What do they do? The, the cider mill used to be the cider mill. Yeah. They've got a wine store right next door to it. Are they allowed to sell hard? Are we allowed to distill in Pennsylvania yet? Like with uh, so many barrels, not we, distill. You you can make wine. Can we make wi a whiskey like in New York? No, I don't think you can. I think they're going to shortly, like small amounts. There's a lot. Like brandies and vodkas and. A stamp on that. I think they're going to do it for brandies and vodkas. How hey, about that? Here's a trick question. What was the first store to test the state law that actually had a liquor store, but not really? The first store? That really did that, but did it before was a popular thing. This is nothing new. Uh, I'll tell you what it was, because uh, remember where Champion Ford is? Yeah. What was the name of the store that was down there? Super Duper, was it? or? Champion Ford. Bef after, after Miller Brothers left, it became a grocery store, remember? Champion Ford. That's on 26th Street? Where, right West 26th. By, West 26th by I-79? Yeah. Remember how it's down in the Depression like? Yeah. Well, it used to be Miller Department Store, and then before Champion bought it, there was a grocery store there. I don't recall. Well, they had a hallway, and technically they had a liquor store on the other side of the hallway. So, I mean... That was super duper. Yeah, that's it. That's, that's what I thought it was. So they, even though, you know... They were they were playing the game even back then. Yeah, it was a gray area. It was on the east side of the store. Yeah, because they had the oak room in the back, remember? Right. Yeah, so I mean, this is nothing new, but now they're, you know... Well, now they're able to integrate, integrate it a little more than what they were able to. Yeah, back then they had to have a hallway and a separate... Yep, separate so, entrance and everything. Yeah. Now you can get wine shipped to you. Yes. You we can? Yeah, you go buy it online and they'll ship it to you. Well, because these would be real tough about getting anything exotic from, like, a different state. I know some of the places they have online stores to be able to buy, buy the different wines. Because I knew a woman that, or, or, well, well, or boy, you thanks, John. I knew a woman whose son made wine in California, and she, she had trouble bringing it here, you know. Mm, yeah. And, and she's going, it's my own son. You know, I'm not, you know. Right. Go. go ahead, caller. Hi, Kaz. Uh, i watching TV right now. Yeah. Better to God, we're back in the 1860s. And the Confederate States are starting up again. What do you mean, the uh, fight? Well, all this stuff that's gone on with Trump and uh, he, you know, came out against the NFL players and the NBA players. And yeah. It's getting, it's getting so black and white right now. It's unbelievable. It's going back to the old days again. Well, it's, it's a big divide in the country oh. that we've had. It's just think now becoming it, more obvious. It. Pardon? Cass, think about it. Hold yeah. on. Think about it. Yeah. Please stay down, down, down state, I mean, down south. The right to work states are anti union. They're, they're against people's rights. They're anti abortion. They're Bible holders in one hand and a gun in the other. Well, I go down there a lot because my, my daughter lives in Mississippi. Good way. It's a, it's, it's a real trip into the past sometimes. I'll tell you what, it, it's just this, this Trump, I, I just, he's just blown us apart. Well, yeah, I mean, it's like, you know, this stuff was. Uh, it never really went away, even down there, but it's it's surfacing a lot a lot more now. It's it's on, uh, this this country this this country is getting so divided. I swear, I don't know if you've been watching that Vietnam. Yeah, I, I've been taping it. I haven't been able to watch it, but I watched it last night. It, I I got to get in the mood for it because it has some very. Uh, Last night was one with the Tet Offensive, and uh, that's when Johnson came out and said, hey, I, I can't run for president. I gather you're the same age as me, probably, right? Yeah, a little, a little younger, but I, I kind of barely remember Vietnam. Well, I, I remember it really well because... Oh, I'm sure you do. Hey, I, I just missed the trip over there, but I lost a few of my buddies there. So watching that, it gets to be a little emotional, but... That can be difficult. But it's, uh, yeah, they, those were strange times, and, you know. I'll tell you what, you know, 67, 68, we were a very divided country, and right now we're getting to be the same way. Oh, no doubt about it. Between, I mean, I, I, when I think, I was just getting out of uh, college, and I, was, and I was going into the service, and he, this gentleman's right. You remember we had, the, we had the discussion about the war, we had uh, race relationships where were terrible. Uh, every, every the country is really just in a in a in a terrible spin. Like, yeah. Well, there is a, it's a quite a divide. 
in, in some way. right now anyway. And the other thing is, you know, our economics aren't doing... You know, in some ways it never went away. That's the problem. Right. Yeah. And I just, just seeing that uh, now, like, I guess yesterday, like, uh, the NASCAR, which figures, fully supported Donald Trump in, in what he said. Fully supported. Which makes sense, because NASCAR is a doubt. Well, yeah. There's not, there's not a whole lot of fans up there in NASCAR. Very few. They're, they're sporadic. They're here and there. But, I mean, down south, that's all they got. Well, you see a lot of the support out in the rural countries and such, in the rural counties and yeah. so forth. And yeah, you know, that's, well, well, that's where the divide is. He, he's it's, definitely got his base. And, and, oh yeah. And you said there's some good and some bad. I mean, it's what we get from any president that comes through. The only thing I'm afraid of, and I think, do you feel this way too, sir? That right now there's no room for debate. Well, we can debate it. I don't see why. But I, I don't think people even want to talk anymore. It's like we're so divided that. Yeah, well, nobody wants to work together anymore and help each other, and that's kind of the, a big issue. Well, that's, hey, that's, I mean, this has been going on for years and years. It's really coming to a head. Yeah, I think... It's like has, and you know this, too. It started when, when the union started going down. Oh, yeah, you know... As, as soon as Ronald Reagan fired those air traffic controllers back in the 80s... Yeah, that was a, that was a big one. That was it. The die was cast. You're not for a right to work, are you? Oh, hell no. I'm pro-union. I'll tell you, my, my brother-in-law worked in a right-to-work state, and he was making important stuff for the military. And they would come in and they tell him that uh, you, you will work 45 hours or 50 hours a week. You'll get paid overtime, but you will work. And if you don't like it, you know. There's a door. Open. There's a door, right. And, you know, I tell people I think the GE problem is simple. They really want the state to turn right to work. And, you know. Well, they've got the money behind them to be able to. And they're getting away with it. Process of moving. If not, we're going to get our way or we're moving. And they've already got it. Inside. You're still there, right, sir? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, think about. You met, when we were kids, I mean, you had a middle class. Uh, you, had, you, you had the ability to, to do things that right now, if you. You know, people wonder why people aren't going to the movies, the ball games. The mall, well, you, you got people, you either got poor people or rich people. Yeah. But the no middle problem. class is pretty much out the window. Yeah. Well, it's, you got people that are working two or three jobs. They have no time to go do anything else. And I tell people, they say, well, you know, right to work, right to I say, you know what? That's up to the workers. If they want to do that, that's their call. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it, you got to remember if you do that, you know, your standard of living is, is you know. Well, everything changes. And it also depends on, you know, who you're working for and stuff. I mean, there's yeah. employers that are great and treat their employees, you know, wonderfully. And then there's other employers that all they care about is, you know, the bottom line and who cares about any of their workers. Well, hey, it's, it's unions that got us to the 40-hour work week. Well, yeah, they, you know, well, they made a well, stand. There's a need for it. Yeah, they did make a good, you know. <sighs> it's it's a trade-off. Well, when, yeah, when you look at, like, you know, in the, in the days after the, uh, you know, even Henry Ford paid his guys pretty good. Right. And be long before unions, because he wanted them to be, have the ability to buy his products, too. And to buy, you know, make the community better. Well, there was like when different companies, they would house the employees and, you know, give them jobs. That way, then, hey, you have a place to live and a place to work. And yeah. you'll be able to grow, because we'll pay you decently to be able to get you, you know, to move on. And then also keep treating, treating them well to keep them employed. Well, thanks for letting me that. Okay. Well, no, I'm glad you did because you know what? A lot of the problems in the city, if you look at it, go back to the, I mean, you can trace it to the decline of the industries that we had here. Yeah. You know, a lot of, and a lot of that is because of our globalization. I mean, right, as people moved out of Erie. Where's because, all our factories went? They, they've went down south, Mexico, or over to Asia. I mean, the people lived in the neighborhoods. They had good houses, you know. They, right. There's and you good know houses, what? good business. People good always move. Oop, he, he left. I'm glad you called, though, sir. Go ahead, caller. Okay, hi, Kaz. Yes. Hey, uh, do you know if they're done paving the streets, or is there a list still out where streets are going to be paved? Or? Well, they're still paving some on the east side. Uh, I'll have to check for you. If we're, if they're pretty close to the end of the year, but uh, the guys that were paving a couple of streets I saw, they still had a couple more to go. Yeah. So there, there's still some at the end of the list. Why, are you looking for one? Or? Well, yeah, between uh, Raspberry and well, West 8th Street. Were you on the list? 
Yeah, but I mean, you don't think you're on it, though, right? I don't know. I'll have to look. I just want to make a comment. Yeah, they, uh, they, they're, they're finishing them up now. Okay. And uh, if you want to be put down, let's say, for next year for consideration, yeah. you want to give it to me now? Well, no, I'm, I just want to make a comment. Okay, go ahead. Between raspberry and cranberry. Okay. West, we have to go up to 12th Street or 10th Street, because if you go between raspberry and cranberry, you're going to lose your muffler. I mean, it's so washboarded, it's insane. Or you got to go in the in, in the south lane almost, you know, because it's really bad. And, but all the way from Liberty on 8th Street all the way out to Cranberry, it's pretty bad. There was a, there was a hole in the street on 8th and Liberty, right on a corner. Now they fix it, they put paint around it. You could look, literally look right down there, it was like a sinkhole. Now they, they didn't put a barrel around it. Well, they did fix that. Okay, so this is between Raspberry and Cranberry, right? And that's really bad there. And what's the street numbers? Uh, eighth. eighth to, just eighth or eighth to twelfth or? Uh, no, between, no, on eighth between Raspberry and Cranberry. Okay, gotcha. Eighth street. Yeah, right. that is kind of a uh, bad area there where it's like 1, block. falling apart. I'll check the list and if it's not, we'll put it in for consideration yeah. next year then. Well, my comment was, I see they did a really nice job of paving 6th Street between Sassafras and, uh, I mean, Myrtle. Mm -hmm. Sassafras. Right. They did a great job on East 5th Street, too, on paving. It's really nice. But on, on 6th Street, well, um, that whole block is Gannon. Yeah. And that street wasn't bad, Cass. It is not wasn't bad. It's like a pool table now, nice and smooth. You know, on East 5th Street, that's all by Erie Insurance. All nice and paved. That wasn't that bad. I'm sure there's a lot worse streets in town than I'm talking about on 8th Street. But it seems like when you're a tax-paying citizen, you're second class. Yeah, they did. Well, you, you wonder sometimes how they pick the list. They claim it's by... But that's what I'm talking about. But that's why I just want to make this comment. In the 8th Street here where I live, I mean, when they come off that Bayfront Highway, they're zooming through here. I mean, this is like... Minneapolis 500, and even the school buses when they pick kids up from Vincent, they go flying by your whole house shakes. Oh, Dave's been Dave's on he, Dave's on it now. He's going to keep me informed because yeah. he, he drives been, it. Yeah, I've been down through that area, and yeah, it is pretty pretty bad. I know it's a busy area too because it's right by the Bayfront. But I mean, the, the the speeders that go by here, I mean, it's incredible. In nighttime, I mean, I've seen motorcycles. They know you can't even tell what color they are. They they got to be going well over 100. They're trying to make these lights, you know, and one in Raspberry. And it seems like, you know, and I'm, I, I realize our police officers are really stressed. Oh, absolutely. I believe, I know, I'm not I, complaining about that. No, and I, 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 we got to find a way. I don't know. You know, I'm kind of in favor. I know this is controversial, but I know it's been brought up in the past about maybe using uh, the sheriff's department and other, you know, allowing them to, to be trained to handle maybe some some of the lesser things that, you know, where our police officers have to be worried about uh, drugs and gunplay and crimes, that maybe they can take care of some of the little stuff, you know, like the... I don't expect them to be out chasing traffic, Donald, because they have other problems here. Well, I mean, they offered, I, there was an offer from, I don't know if it was Sheriff Mursky or Sheriff Loomis, that they would not be against, you know, having their men involved more. Yeah. And if that's the case, if we can do it, I think, you know, if we could have the state look at that and say, you know, where you got communities like Erie who are now, you know, our police officers can't do the things they do out in the suburbs. Absolutely no. They don't have the problems we have in the city. No, and the little things are like the little things that become big things. Well, it's like out in big cities. I mean, they have speed traps. They have radar zones. Yeah. They, you know. We're going to have to, I think maybe we're going to have to start looking at that stuff. Right. Or use of cameras, like. How about that one if we put, like, I know people don't like Big Brother, but maybe speed cameras in certain intersections. Yeah, well, too bad the city can't use radar, you know. No, see, that's just, everything comes down to the state. Mm -hmm, it, absolutely, yeah. And, like, the use of cameras, the same thing. Right. If we were allowed to, like, I was like telling this one gentleman a couple calls before, I was going to the ball game in Cleveland, and my GPS is warning me of these speed cameras. Yeah. And my wife said, what does that mean? I said, it means they give you a ticket. Well, it's a deterrent. Yeah, they take your they take your picture and they right. Well, and that's just it. Is I think people see within the city that they know that hey, you don't you don't have radar, so then they can yeah. But if they knew there was a speed right, camera. if there was some type of enforcement of it of some sort, then people would know hey, I can't speed here anymore. I have to slow down. I've never been in favor of that stuff, but I think now now's the time that 
Well, it needs to be something that needs to be enforced. There's yeah. enormous cost to it also. And then, but in light of all these, uh, like, my, my friend's grandson was hit on Liberty Street the other day on 12th Street. Yeah. And there was another hit and run this morning of a school kid. And uh, I guess the kid wasn't hurt, but he was hit. And then you see all these people that are flying around. They don't look where they're going. I used to say, let's go for a ride. I don't want to go for a ride <laughs> no more. I get a half a block from my house and somebody almost cut you in half, you know. It's just crazy. Well, the other day I was going by Jefferson School. And, you know, you're in the school zone. It's clearly marked. Everybody's going. I mean, don't you wonder why everybody near you is going about 10 miles an hour? And here's this person, they got the cell phone in their hand, just flying down the intersection. I'm honking at them. Yeah, the cell phones. Yeah, and they're giving me the finger, you know, while I'm honking at them. I get, yeah, but I don't do that no more because you're allowed to get a bullet. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? <laughs> you, but, but, you know, I, I do the speed <coughs> limit, maybe a little, couple of miles an hour over. And I have people in the back, they're blowing the horn and telling me, hurry up. Oh, yeah, it's like there's, you can't go fast enough anymore. <laughs> all these people, I mean. Let's say, okay. I've noticed, I noticed a big difference, because I'm originally from Dunkirk, New York, yeah. that there's a big difference between you know, uh, New York and Pennsylvania. Like, if you go five, ten, if you go like 10 over in New York, you're going to get pulled over, because there's the cops out there. You mean on the highway? It. Yeah, or even on the local streets. Oh, yeah. They yeah. do it in the local streets in the cities and stuff. Where here, it's, they know, people know that you know, you're not going to get as caught as much, so they're able to speed 10, 15 over the speed limit or more and get away with it, because they are able to get away Well, you can hear them on Pine Avenue at night or East 38th Street. You know, oh, yeah, they'll be, yes. Yeah. And they turn right on red. Usually, the, the, the stoplights don't even come on. They turn right on red. They look to the left. Yeah. They don't look to the right. I seen a kid almost. He come off the curb. He almost got hit by a car because they're idiots looking to the left and they turn right on red. And most of the time, I counted seven cars out of ten one time up on 10th Street. They went through the stop sign. I mean, didn't come. It says complete stop. That's what it, my book said when I was taking my well, driver's yeah, license I mean. hundred years ago. You know? <laughs> it's, it's, they drift through it. Sometimes the stop lights don't even come on. No, you're right. And, you know, hey, I, I was I was raised in a time when we didn't have it, and we were hoping we would get it. So, geez, I mean, stopping your car for a second, I mean, is that going to hurt you? you know. And you can almost get hit in the back end, too. When you stop at the stop sign, somebody in the back of you thinks you're going to go through it, and they're right on your bumper. Yeah, you, you got to kind of be aware of the environment, because if you stop, you're right. They're going to run right up your back end. Yeah, I don't, uh, I don't take my eyes off the road one second, I'll tell you, when I'm driving. When, I'm, when somebody else is driving a car, I see a lot of things I've never seen because when I'm driving, I, mean, I ain't looking. I'm <laughs> watching the road, you know. I was on the highway one day, and I'm watching a person. You're trying to pass a vehicle on the left, and you're, you're, you're going at a pretty good clip, but you're not going fast enough for them, so they pass you on the right. Absolutely, yeah. And thread the needle between you and the semi, and I'm going, oh, man, you know. People will do it, though. Yeah, and you can see it coming, so, you know, you're ready for yep. it. Yeah, well, hopefully no more little kids will get hit the way these nitwits are flying around here. It's just, just Yeah, you know, they've been warned that, you know, there's kids out right now. Yeah. Like, even up by my area, we got big kids. We got college kids. Right. They, and they do stupid things, you know. When I'm driving down a city street and I see kids on the sidewalk, I got my foot close to that brake. Because you never know, they can dart out a ball could come out of something, you know. Well, yeah, because, you know, up by my neighborhood, we had kids going to the... Local taverns, you got kids going to regular school. So, I mean, you got a lot of kids. So, I mean, at, at certain times of day, you just make yourself aware that they're probably going to do what you don't expect them to do. Right. They're probably going to dart, and that's going to be the, you know. You know, I wouldn't mind if they raised my taxes and hired a couple <coughs> more traffic enforcement officers. Raise my taxes, you know. We used to have them years ago. Remember the white, the guys in the white hats? Oh, yeah. And then what the city doesn't get all the money for moving violation, the state gets most of that, right? Yep, that's true. We get a we get a very, very small percentage of it. A lot of it's people complain about, but a lot of that goes to special education funds and highway funds and. Really? Yeah. For the state. Yep. That's why there's not an incentive for the city to be able to local to police to go after to people. Yeah. All right. Yeah, you go down to West Virginia or someplace, and there's an incentive to them, so you know. Well, that's how it is in New York. I remember, you know. Up there, I mean, the local cops would pull you over just because that generates more money for right. whatever village or city that you're in. Yeah, you remember the speed traps. Yeah. You're going out of town there. Okay, guys, that's all my comments are about. And uh, take a ride over uh, 8th Street between uh, Raspberry <coughs> and Cranberry and hang on to your muffler. Well, I, I should because i got to make one more last stand at Sarah's uh, before the summer's up. Yeah, there you go, before it ends. End, uh, end of this month? Yeah. yeah, that's it. I mean, so... 
then the month's the end next Sunday. Yeah, I, I got to do my usual pilgrimage the last day like everybody else. Yeah, we were just done last week. I did too, but I said, you know what, it's too... We, we got one more week, and I tried to talk to my wife. I said, we'll, we'll come to last day again. Well, when I went, I went downstairs last week, and a school bus pulled in. I said, no, wife, let's hurry up and get in there. You know, yeah. It's, well, what it was, it was a bunch of retired Navy military men. Ah, wow, that was nice. Yeah, I thought it was great. I was talking to them in here, telling all the stories in there, you know, and, and they were all in there, and they must have had them on a tour somewhere, but the whole, it was a school bus, but they had them full of them guys, and they all had their caps on, you know, with the Navy and the boats they were on and stuff. Really great. I wish I was there because we'd have a little fight. The Army and Navy always fight, but. <laughs> there you go. It's good fighting, though, know, but. Yeah, I heard some of them guys kind of arguing about back and forth a little bit. It was great, though. I was but they used to get time. mad. They used to get mad at us when we would uh, come from an Army base and head into, like, Norfolk or something. Oh, yeah. Or Virginia Beach. That was, like, their territory, but. Yeah, well, we, me and my wife, when we've been in restaurants and a, a military guy comes in there, you know he's retired you now. I buy his lunch when I leave. That's nice of you. They appreciate it. After all, they do. A couple of us younger guys, we like when they had the free meals, mm -hmm. we decided not to go because we just said, you know what? Yeah, right. There, there's, there's veterans in either worse than we do, you know. Yep, yep. <laughs> so let them let them go have the free meal, you know. Yeah, you're sure right. But uh, yeah, it is fun talking to them, though. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, thank you. Got you got to go to Sarah's though. The last one. Oh yeah, that's yeah. I'm surprised that they don't get you know build a bigger facility to be able to do it all year round. I, I talked to him the other day, the owner, he, he was uh, trying to talk him into coming downtown here. Go ahead, caller. Hey, Cash. Hey, Doc. But, uh, what came about from, I know they were talking a couple weeks ago, because I just came back from Lancaster a couple weeks ago, that uh, they were trying to get a right to work uh, for Erie County, whatever became of that. No, they, they wanted Erie County, uh, what happened was Erie County Council passed, I think, a resolution not supporting a right to work state. They they were anti, I think, right? If I remember right, I think, do you remember? I'm not sure. I think it was anti right to work state. Okay, because. The unions are, are were trying to get them to, uh, you know, go and support the unions, in other words. Well, you know, I just came back from Lancaster, and there's about 90 of those of my profession there, and 20 of them were CEOs of big companies from different states, Colorado, Wisconsin, Michigan. You mean your side job? Huh? The one I'm not allowed to mention, your side job? Yeah. Okay. There were 90 of us there. Yeah. And, uh, it was a nice convention we had, and I got the chance to sit down with six of the CEOs of these big companies from that, mm -hmm. well that way to try to entreat them to come up to this state. Well, the two negatives that they gave me were, first of all, the taxes, second of all was union, because they said, they, I said, what's wrong with the union? They said, well, it's not that they against unions, it's the investors who feel unions take too much of their return that they don't get enough money back for what they invest in the companies. Um, and I know a couple about the middle of around June, my one sister lived down in South Carolina, she retired from the BMW company down here. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course they're non union. And they just, they, what you said, they were just hiring 4,000 more employees. There are over 10,000 employees down there now for that company. And it's basically, they're starting, they start out at 18 to 25 an hour down there with non-union. And they got great benefits. So it's not, you know, it's not like I can say the unions always have to guarantee good benefits and everything. Yeah. And they got right, you know, their, I guess the right to work from what I've been to understand. But I just wonder why don't we get some, you know, it's like you, I look at the city of Erie and how it changed from the 1960s to today. Where are all those companies that we used to be able to find jobs at and they're not there mm -hmm. anymore. And a lot of them, I know when uh, GE started talking here a couple of years ago, uh, and I don't want to say it over the year, but the reason they said it just what GE is going to be going because uh, the people who were in the union at Hammer Mill now are in the union at GE, and they're going to do the same thing to GE as they did to Hammer Mill. So, but then I, it's kind of it's, uh, almost prophetic. But anyway, I'm just curious as to why they didn't want to give at least a chance at getting the company coming in if they would you know, be uh, able to start up without the necessity of. Uh, creating unions and well, the, the company. The unions have their, their, their pros, but I'm 
starting to see uh, some of the cons of the union. Well, here, right. Dave wants to say something, though. So. Well, it's like down south. I mean, he said it all depends on the employer or the company you're working for. I mean, they said there's good, good companies and bad companies as well. I what mean, did, what, yeah, go ahead. Right, and I mean, same with out west. I mean, there's a lot of places that are booming, so that's where people are going right now. It's hard to bring those companies over to this area because we're still set in the mindset of back in, you know, but once the you 70s. Make, but once you make that decision, right. there's a... Uh, well, you're going to get a lot of backlash because of the amount of the older generation that's here already still, too. Well, you, you can't guarantee that, like, like we say, there are some good companies that pay those good wages. Once you, re once you remove the, the right to unionize, okay, there's no going back on that. And so therefore, you know, if people take advantage of it, you know, there's no, there you have no, no recourse. Well, there should be like a middle ground of some sort. But there usually isn't. Right. I mean, that's, that's where the tough part is. Like when I was taking uh, courses again in, in business, there was union state, non-union state, right to work state. Uh, then you had what they call maintenance of membership, which was a fancy word for uh, you had 30 days to make up your mind, you know. I mean, like even now, you can be a teacher without being in a union, but you got to pay a portion of the union fee because they, they're getting you some of the benefits they bargained for. Right. So, I mean, the problem is, Doc, it's, there's pros and cons, but, well, I mean, the, the, the thing is, you have to decide, uh, are you willing to work for... You know, is 18 to 25 good for a lot of people? It may be. It may not be good for some people, you know, and... Hey, Chaz, I got a couple of friends that do work for GE. I mean, we talk about the GE situation. Yeah. Their amount of time. But, you know, I have to be upfront with you. They don't like the GE union because what they found, they, it had made their uh, finances worse than what they had before. It seems like the more the union tried to do for them, the worse their uh, the increased cost of, uh, for them to have a life. And uh, matter of fact, one fellow just had to trade it for a, yeah. a poorer car than what he had. But you know, you, you said something here that made sense in the beginning of your argument too, okay? When you go back to the old timers, and I'm talking about the, the barons that owned the hammer mill and uh, the, the Lord family and the people that started businesses in all these towns. Well, look at your own town, Doc. Yeah. And look at Meadville, you know, with Talon Zipper and... Well, you've been tied Meadville with... Uh, yeah, what did you have? You had, uh, was it Cyclops? Yeah, Cyclops. It, it and, went out because of the union. And Queen Cutlery, is it still there? Nope. Uh, Queen Cutlery's still there, but they're not union. Okay, so you look at all that stuff and you go, the old timers, that the old businessmen that were big shots in Erie were happy with that. They were happy making a good profit and being the big shot. And they were happy helping their community and getting their name on stuff. That but, that could, but that has disappeared now because now you got stockholders that say... Well, I just wish to, to... I mean, there's a lot of companies that shouldn't go out of business that do because... Not because they didn't make money, they didn't make enough money. Well, the other thing is, is the, you know, the other competition that a lot of businesses are dealing with and, you know, it's also, it's affected the retail market, is the internet. Yeah. I mean, on how much everything's online now. But it's a shame how, you know, people, like the young kids, they think different than their grandparents did. Exactly. Well, that's the thing, is the big age difference as Where well. Where they were happy with, uh, let's say, $4 on their investment, the new kids got to get 8 Yeah. <clears throat> you know, and the yep. stockholders want 10 So they look at a town like Erie and they go, well, it's not doing bad, but it's not doing what we want, so dump it. Yep. And that's what happened to Hammer Mill. Hammer Mill became a victim of, of, a, of a hostile takeover. It's sort of like, you know, Lord, they moved up to Robinson out in Mill Creek. They're not in the city whatsoever anymore. Oh. They took everything they had and moved. Let me ask you something. Yeah. The Scott Union? Who? Scott. Scott Enterprises? Probably not. I don't think they are. And that's a good example right there, how they're doing. Yeah, but you know what? Most people would tell you. You know, they're, said, they're, don't get me wrong. I know the blisters. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. Just that I think we need companies to come in here that might not uh, want a union, but they will at least establish a, a base to start uh, showing interest. This is the place to get businesses going, and then you know, eventually we'll get some other businesses in here that can be unionized and get our city back to growing again. Well, that's going to be a debate on the state level because it has to be done on the state. 
I mean, you can do it locally, but if it's done on a state level, it's going to work a lot better. Well, but, it's getting incentive to you know bring big business back to this area. I but mean, people, but people like, and I'm not, I don't, not saying bad things about Nick Scott. But, oh, no. but those aren't those aren't the you know the trouble. But the thing is, it's, you know, like you, I, I, you know, as we get older, like you said, I'm getting tired of seeing my taxes go up, and I, you know, not working a full time job anymore. I don't have the means to pay that extra increase in taxes. Yeah, just remember though, you know, if you work like in the restaurant or entertainment profession, you know, do you want to do that the rest of your life? You know. I've been to some of these, like even, uh, uh, well, <laughs> I don't want to say the restaurant, but there, there's some restaurants. You look, you'll see some of these people in their 80s cleaning tables because they have to do that to be able to live to pay their insurance or medical insurance or yeah. taxes because yeah. they don't have the money saved up to do it. So. Well, I've noticed that a lot with my generation. The, my generation and younger, is, right. they can't find the factory jobs or the you know, higher paying jobs, so they're working two or uh, three jobs. Not, they're, uh, yeah, we got to get going Thanks, too. Doc. So, see you, Doc. Well, that kind of uh, that kind of does it for us. Yeah, it was a good show, though. Yep, got a bunch of different questions out. And you bring them out. Topics. Will I, I see I, you again or what? I'll try to be coming in next week. Okay, I'll give you a call just to check. Oh, of course. And DJ, if you're watching. Yeah, if you're feeling better. Take the Polish holy water and uh, do what I tell you. you. Think it'll be okay? Hopefully, you wrote down the instructions. <laughs> a little honey in there would be good for you. Ladies and gentlemen, you have been watching the Taxpayers Hotline Show on Erie's own Government Access, Channel 9.